Good evening. My name is Michael Gerard, and I am a proud board member of Chaska Valley Family Theatre. It is my privilege to welcome you to CVFT's first ever virtual one act festival. Now, I've always wanted the role of MC. You get to warm up the audience, put on a tuxedo, and tell some jokes. Since this was pre recorded, my jokes probably got edited out. Anyway, Probably best to leave our jokes to our talented cast across a night of stellar one-act productions. Now, please remember, as you watch and laugh out loud at these zany productions, the actors and production team members involved are all volunteers. And they do this because they love theater. Now, it's only through the generous support of viewers like you that CVFT has been able to bring you high quality theater, like the productions you're about to see, for the past 25 years, including the past year during COVID. To support your local community theater, please visit us at www.cvft.org. Thank you and enjoy the production. My dear Ivan Vasilovich, I'm extremely glad to see you here. Now this is a surprise to you, boy. How are you and so on and all that? I, I am well, thank you. And how are you getting on? Uh, we're just getting by somehow, thanks to your prayers and so on. <laughs> now, you know, you shouldn't forget all about your dear neighbors. But why are you so formal? What's the occasion? Why the evening dress, gloves, and so on, and all that. Are you going somewhere? No, no, I've only come to see you, honored Stepan Stepanovich. Why are you in evening dress, my boy? It's as if you're celebrating New Year's Eve. <laughs> you see, it's like this, and I, and I am sorry to trouble you. I've, I've come to you, honored Stepan Stepanovich, with a request. It's not the first time I've had the privilege of coming to you for help, and you have always been... Well, uh, so to speak, uh, oh, I beg your pardon. I am very nervous. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll drink some water, uh, honored Stefan Stefanovich. If he's come to borrow money, he'll be sorely disappointed. What is it, dear friend? Oh, well, well uh, you see, honored Stefanovich, I, I mean, Stefanovich, oh, uh, pardon me. I'm, I'm shaking with nerves, as you can see. In, in short, you, you alone can help me, though I don't deserve it, of course. And, and I haven't any right to expect your assistance. Don't beat around the bush, dear boy. Spit no. it out and so on. Well, one minute. The fact is, I, I've come to ask for the hand of your daughter, Natalia Stepanova, in marriage. Oh, dear God in heaven, Ivan Vasilovich, such joy. Can you say that again? I'm not sure I've heard all that, and so on. Uh, I, I have the honor to ask for your daughter's... Oh, my dear boy, I'm so glad, and so on, and yes, indeed, and all that sort of thing. I have been hoping for this for a long time. You've always been like a son to me. God bless you both, and so on, and all that. And, oh, look at me. I'm blubbering like an idiot. Such happiness. Oh. Oh. You rascal. <laughs> I'll go call Natalia, and all that. Oh, honored Stefan Stefanovich. I, do you think I may count on her consent? Why, of course she'll consent. She's in love. <laughs> She's like a cat in heat. <laughs> oh, well, I won't be long. Oh, it's cold. I'm trembling all over. I must resolve myself. I need steely determination. If I hesitate, I'm finished. Oh, it is so cold. Oh, and Natalia Stepanova is an excellent housekeeper. She is not bad looking and she went to school. What more do I want? Oh, I'm getting that ringing in my ear again. Oh, in any event, I need to marry. It's as simple as that. I'm already 35. 
I ought to leave a quiet and regular life. Uh, oh, I am suffering from the palpitations. Oh, I am far too excitable. At this very moment, my lips are trembling again. And, uh, oh, I'm getting that twitching in my right eyebrow uh, again. Uh, oh, but it is so cold. Uh, well, hello there. It's only you. Papa said, go inside. There's a merchant come by to collect his goods. How have you been, Ivan Vasilovich? Uh, I've been well honored to tell you, Stefanova. Oh, you must excuse my apron. We're shelling peas for drying. Now, why haven't you been here for such a long time? Won't you have some lunch? Uh, no, thank you. I've I had some already. Oh. Well, the weather is glorious now, but yesterday it was so wet that the field hands couldn't do anything all day. How much hay have you stacked? Oh. Actually, I got a bit enthusiastic today and had a whole field cut. Now I'm regretting it because I'm afraid the hay may rot. Should I have waited a bit? Oh, yes, I ought to have waited a bit. Oh, but look at you, why, you're in evening dress. Oh, you do look nice. Are you going to a party or something? Tell me. You, you see, I'm Natalia Stepanova. The, the fact is I've come here to see you if you, if I would ask. They hear me out. Of course you'd be surprised, perhaps a bit angry. It's really cold. What's the matter? Well? Uh, I will try to be brief. You must know, honored Natalia Stepanova, that I have long since my childhood, in fact, had the privilege of knowing your family, my late aunt and her husband, from whom, as you know, I inherited my land, always had the greatest respect for your father and your late mother. The Lomovs and the Chikoblovs have always had the friendliest, I might also might, uh, say the most affectionate regard for each other. We are close neighbors. Of course, you already know this. My land borders yours. My oxen, meadow, touch your birch woods. Uh, one birch moment. Uh, please forgive the interruption, but you said my oxen meadows. But are they yours? Yes, they're mine. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oxen meadows are ours, not yours. Uh, no, honored to tell you, stepping over, they're mine. Well, I never knew that before. How do you make that out? How? Uh, I'm talking about the oxen meadows, uh, that tiny piece of land wedged in between your birch wood and the burnt marsh. And the burnt marsh, uh, yes, yes, no, they're ours. Uh, oh, you are mistaken, honored <laughs> Natalia Stepanova, they're mine. Now think very carefully, Ivan Basilovich. How long have they been yours? Uh, how long? As long as I can remember. Now, really, wait just a minute. I can show you the documents, Otter Natalia Stepanova. You are wrong. Both my grandfather and great grandfather reckoned that their land extended to Burnt Marsh, which means that oxen meadows were ours. There's no point in arguing. It's simply ridiculous. I have the papers, Natalia Stepanova. Oh, I see. You're just making fun of me. Oh, this is a big joke. We've had the land for nearly 300 years, and then we're suddenly told that it isn't ours. Ivan Vasilovich, I can hardly believe what you are saying. But these meadows aren't valuable. They only come to about 12 acres. But that's not the point. It's the unfairness. I can't stand unfairness. Didn't you hear what I said? The meadows are ours, and that's all there is to it. They're mine. Ours. You can go on about it until you are blue in the face, and you can wear 15 dress jackets, but I tell you, they're ours, ours, ours. I don't want anything that belongs to you, and I won't give up anything of mine. Thank you very much. Oh, Natalia Stefanova, I don't care about the meadows. I'm acting on principle. If you like, I will give them to you as a gift. If there is any getting to do, I'll do it because they're mine. I cannot believe your behavior. Up to this, we've always thought of you as a good neighbor and friend. Last year, we lent you our threshing machine, which meant us putting off our own threshing till November. Now you treat us as if we were strangers, giving me my own land indeed. In my opinion, that's not at all neighborly. In fact, I think it's downright insulting. Then you think I'm some sort of land grabber? Never in my life have I grabbed anybody else's land, and I won't allow anyone to accuse me of doing so. The oxen meadows are mine. 
It's not true. They're ours. Mine. Mine. It's a lie. I'll prove it. I'll send my mowers out to the meadows this very day. What? My mowers will be there this very day. Oh, I will break their necks if they set foot on my land. <laughs> you dare. Oh, oxen meadows are mine. You understand me? Mine. Please don't shout. You can carry on as you please in your own house, but here I expect you to behave as a gentleman. Oh, if it wasn't for the excruciating palpitations, throbbing murmurs ripping through me, oh, my temples are near bursting point. Oh, I would talk to you in a different way. The oxen meadows are mine. Ours. Mine. Ours. What's going on? What's all the shouting for? Papa, please tell to this gentleman who owns Oxen Meadows, him or us? The meadows are ours. But step on step on out of it. How can they be yours? Be reasonable, man. My aunt's grandmother gave the meadows for the temporary and free use of your grandfather's peasants. The peasants used the land for 40 years and got as accustomed to it as if it was their own. But what happened was. And then, excuse me, you have forgotten that the peasants didn't pay your grandmother and all that because the meadows were in dispute and so on. And now every dog in the village knows that they're ours. Uh, it means that you haven't seen the survey plans. I'll prove to you that they're mine. You won't prove it. I shall. Why yell like that? You won't prove anything by yelling. I don't want anything of yours and don't intend to give up anything of mine. Why should I? And furthermore, if you intend to go on arguing about it, I just as soon give the meadows over to the peasants and let them have it, you know, so there. I don't understand. How do you have the right to give away somebody else's land? I'll decide whether I have the right or not, because, young man, I'm not used to being spoken to in that tone of voice and so on and all that. I, young man, am many years your senior, so I ask you to speak to me without getting yourself into a state and so on. No, you think I am a fool and you want to take advantage. You call my land yours, then you want to talk to me calmly and politely. Good neighbors don't behave like that, Stefan Stefanovich. You're not a neighbor, you're a land grabber. What's that? What did you say? Papa, send the mowers out to the meadows at once. What, what did you say, sir? Oxen meadows are ours, and I will never give them up. Never, never, never. We'll see. I'll have the matter taken to court, and then we'll see who they belong to. Ah, uh, oh, court. You can take it, go ahead and take it to court and all that, by all means do. I know you. You're just looking for a chance to go to court and so on. All your people are like that. Your family is famous for suing anybody and everybody. Keep my family out of this. The Lomos have always been honorable, law-abiding people, not like some I will mention. Like your grandfather, who was arrested for embezzlement, for instance. You Wilmots were all crazy, all of you. All, all, all. Your grandmother was nothing more, grandfather was nothing more than a drunk. And your younger aunt, Nastasia Milanova, ran off with an architect. That's right, an architect, and so on. <laughs> and your mother was a hunchback. Oh, my God, something's pulling at my side. Oh, I need water. Your father was a gambler and a cheat. And your aunt was a gossip and a backbiter. Oh, you are a snake and a... Oh, it's an open secret that before the last elections, you bribed... Oh, my eyes have gone blurry. Where are my gloves? It's low. It's dishonest. It's mean. And you're just a malicious, two-faced liar. Yes. Oh, my. Oh, I think I'm dying. Man, don't set foot in my house again. Take it to court. We'll see. <laughs> he can go to hell. Creep. Crook. The monster. First he takes our land, and then he has the cheek to abuse us. Ah, and to think that that upstart that monkey brain has the confounded nerve to make a proposal and so on and all that 
a proposal. What proposal? <laughs> Why, he came here to propose to you. Propose to me? Why didn't you tell me that before? That's why he was dressed up in that silly suit and all that, the stuffed sausage. He came to propose to me? Oh my God. Well, bring him back. Oh my God, get him back. Oh my God, please make him come back. Come back. Oh, quick, quick, go. What's that? What's the matter with you? Oh. Oh, what have I done? Fool, oh, I'll hang myself. I'll shoot myself. I'll hang myself, and then I'll shoot myself. I'm going to die. Get him. Oh, no, I'm going. <gasps> oh, what have they done to me? Oh, make him come back, please. <laughs> He's coming, he's coming back, and all that, and so on. But you talk to him yourself this time. I leave it to you, and all that, and so on. Oh, get him! I told you. Oh, what a burden, Lord, to be the father of a grown-up daughter. I'll cut my throat, I will. Indeed, we cursed him, we abused him, and, and drove him out, and, and it's all you're doing, yours. No, it was you. I tell you, it's not my fault. Now, you talk to him yourself. Oh, my uh, heart is beating wildly. Uh, something keeps pulling at my side. Oh, forgive us, Ivan Vasilovich. We were all a little heated. I remember now. Oxen meadows really are yours. Oh, my meadows. Both my eyebrows are twitching now. The meadows are yours, yes, yours. Oh, do sit down. We were wrong. Oh, I did it on principle. The land is worth little to me, but the principle. Yes, yes, the principle. Now, please, let's talk about something else. I have the evidence, you see, my aunt's grandmother gave the land to your father's grandfather's presents, so that you Yes, <laughs> yes, that's enough! Oh, I wish I knew how to start. Will you be going hunting this season? I'm thinking of having to go at the geese and the grouse after the harvest. Oh, have you heard? My best dog, Gesser, has gone lame. Oh, what a pity. How did it happen? Oh, I don't know. He must have twisted it or gotten bitten by another dog. He is my very best dog. To say nothing of how much he cost me. I gave Mirinov 125 for it. You were robbed, Ivan Vasilovich. Uh, I, I think it was a bargain. He is a first-rate dog. Papa only paid 85 for his hound Messer, and Messer is much better than Gesser. Messer? Better than Gesser? How do you mean Messer better than Gesser? Of course he's better. Well, Messer is still young, but on points and pedigree, there's no comparison. But Natalia Stefanova, you forget that Messer has an overshot jaw, and an overshot jaw always means the dog's a bad hunter. Overshot, is he? Well, that's news to me. I assure you, his lower jaw is shorter than the upper. You've measured it, have you? Yes, he is all right chasing the pack, of course. But if you want him to get a hold of anything... In the first place, our Messer is a thoroughbred animal, the son of Lesser and Stresser, whereas your Gesser is the son of Slusher and Plusher and has no pedigree whatsoever. But he's just a flea-bitten old wreck. Oh, he is old. But I wouldn't take five Messers for him. Why? How can you even? Gesser is a proper dog. As for Messer, well... He's just a joke of a hound. If you had paid 25 for him, I would say 20 too much. <laughs> Ivan Vasilovich, are you being obnoxious on purpose today? First, you pretend that the meadows are yours, and now you're saying that Gesser is better than Messer? I don't like people who refuse to face facts. You know perfectly well that Messer is a hundred times better than your ridiculous Gesser. Oh, I see, Natalia Stepanova. You consider me either blind or stupid. You must realize that Messer is overshot. It's not true. It is? It's not true. What are you shouting for? 
are you lying for? Gesser is only fit to be shot, and you dare to compare him with Messer? Oh, excuse me. I cannot continue this discussion. Uh, my heart is palpitating again. Ugh. You are typical of those hunters who are all full of talk, but useless when it actually comes to hunting. Oh, oh shut up. My heart is- I won't shut up. Uh, what's the matter now? Papa, tell us truly, which is the better dog, our messer or his guesser? Stefan Stefanovich, please tell me just one thing. Is your messer overshot or not? Yes or no? And suppose he is. What does it matter? He's the best dog in the district uh, for all that and so on. Uh, but isn't my guesser better? Tell me honestly. Oh, don't excite yourself, dear boy. Allow me. Your guesser certainly has his good points. He's purebred, firm on his feet, has well-sprung ribs and all that and so on. But if you want to know the truth, that dog has two defects. He's old and he's short in the muzzle. You'll have to excuse me, but I'm having severe heart murmurs. Uh, let's face the facts. Uh, you will remember that on the Marcinski hunt, my guesser ran neck and neck with the Count's dog uh, fresher while your messer was chasing up the rear. He got left behind because the Count hit him with his whip. <laughs> he had good reason. The dogs are supposed to run after the fox, but Messer went and started chasing a sheep. It's not true. Now, now I'm very liable to lose my temper and so on, so let's just stop arguing. You started with this. Everybody is always jealous of everybody else's dogs. Yes, we're all like that. You no sooner notice that some dog is better than your guesser, and then you begin with this that and so on and all that but i i remember everything oh i remember too oh, i remember too <laughs> what what do you remember oh, oh my heart i can't my heart oh what sort of hunter are you you'd be better off lying down in a darkened room than chasing after foxes oh my heart oh, my what sort of hunter are you anyway? But let's just change the subject in case I lose my temper. You're not a real hunter, and let's just leave it at that. Oh, and you are a hunter? You only go hunting to get into with the Count and his wealthy friends. Oh, my art. Uh, you are a sneaky social climber. What? I'm a social? What? Did you shut up. Oh, snake. Young brat. Old rat. Shut up or I'll shoot you like a partridge, you fool. Oh, there. There it is. Oh, my heart's burst. I'm dying. Oh, call a doctor. Oh, oh I'm sick. My heart is you, pounding. Oh. You can't even ride a horse properly. Papa? What's the matter with him? Papa, look! Papa! Oh, Ivan Vasilovich! He's dead! Well, what is it? What's the matter? Oh, he, he's dead! He's dead? Oh, my God! Uh, well, water! Doctor! Uh, here, uh, drink this! Uh, oh, no, he's not drinking. He is dead and all that. Oh, why don't I put a bullet in my brain? I deserve to die. Give me a knife. Give me a pistol. Oh, oh, wait. He, he's coming around. I think he'll live. Here, drink some water. Oh, I see stars. Where, where am I? It's very blurry. No, no. Just listen. Hurry up and get married. She's willing and all that. And so on, I give you my blessing, but please just leave me in peace. What? Who? She says yes. Well, go on, kiss, he, kiss her. Oh, you're alive. Oh, yes, yes. I'm willing. Kiss each other. Uh, kiss who? Mwah. Oh, yes, that, that's very nice. 
excuse me, what, what's going on? Uh, oh, I remember. Uh, my heart, stars. Oh, I am happy. <laughs> Natalia, step in, hold on. Oh, but my eyebrows are still twitching. I'm happy too. What a weight off my shoulders. Now you can admit that Messer is better than Guesser. He's worse. Better. Worse. Worse, worse, worse. Oh, Ivan Vasilovich, I am telling you, we are to be married and so on and all like that. I don't and they live happily ever after. your soup? Uh, my soup has a fly in it. No. Yes. Mon dieu, a fly. Oh, la 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 la. Yes, there he is. I see him. He is looking at me. It's most distressing. Indeed, monsieur. Indeed. I am at a loss. Who is your waiter? Um, I'm not certain. Jacques? Jacques? Yes? Yes, uh, Monsieur, how is your soup? Uh, well, uh... His soup contains a fly. No. Mais oui. Outrageous. Monsieur, uh, did you ask for a fly in your soup? Ah. No, I did not. No. It is not fly soup? No, it is not. Most definitely not. Who is your waiter? Well, uh... I will kill him. We oui. His waiter must die. Point him to me. I don't remember. I will tear him limb from him. I'd rather you didn't. He will pay for this fly with his life. Hmm? No? Well, no, it is just a fly. Certainly. Of course. Suman un mush. Ma, we just a fly. Today, just a fly. Tomorrow, a ball of air, a wad of chewy gum. The next day, a human head. The line must be drawn. I don't want to make trouble. Nonsense. Nonsense. Monsieur, the customer is always, uh, the customer is always, uh... Huh? Right. Right. We, oui. Solman. Uh, we will simply kill your waiter. Problem solved. Might I just have another soup? Of course. The soup is not the issue. Obviously. The issue is the fly. Exactement. The fly. The fly must die as well. Yeah. Are you insane? A poor defenseless creature merely trying to keep warm and you suggest we end his existence? Pardon. I have missed the point. Obviously. Can you forgive me, monsieur? Of course. Stupid, stupid. The fly is an innocent. Obviously. A babe in the, in the... The fly has been duped. Duped? He is a pawn in this devilish plot. In the woods, we. Oui. Yes, yes. Poor fly, poor fly. But might I just... Uh... Ah, poor fly. You have now a pawn. A kinship. Huh? With the fly, whose life you have saved. Exactly. May I offer you a, a jar, monsieur? I can poke petite holes in the lid for your fly. I don't want this fly. Of course not. Silly. What would I do with a fly? Well, you have saved his life, monsieur, in some cultures. 
Eh, but I may overstep my bounds. Always ripe, always ripe. Uh, is that right? Uh, pardon, monsieur, we can certainly make arrangements for this fly. It needn't be of concern. Do not think again of this fly. Thank you. Darian, be assured this fly will live out his days in comfort. The comfort of soup. You idiot. Sorry? All I really want is another. Monsieur, what have you ordered for your next course? The souffle. Ooh, la 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 la, the souffle. Magnifique. Absolutely. Like you have died and gone to, uh, to. May I assume, monsieur, that you did not order any flies in your souffle? You may assume that, yes. That is a no? Most definitely no. Pierre, s'il vous plaît, inspect monsieur souffle uh, tout de suite. D'accord. This souffle will have no flies, monsieur. Yes. Thank you. Really, what I most desire is the... You have a desire, monsieur? Yes. You need only as... A soup. A soup, please. One without the fly. Of course. You would like your soup returned to its original fly-free condition. If you will permit me, I can remove the fly or not. Why would I... Are you saying... A... The souffle will have no flies. Excellent, Pierre. I have seen to it. The chef was quite upset. I don't want to upset the chef. Nonsense. It is your right to upset the chef. You have a grievance. Don't concern yourself with the chef, monsieur. He is insignificant. As insignificant as I am. Um, Perhaps I should kill him. Insignificant as I um, wish for you to kill anybody. Not the waiter, not the chef, not the fly. Oh, monsieur, you have the heart of a saint. Thank you. Why on earth would I kill the fly? You forgive them all. Incroyable. To forgive is, uh, is... Uh, yes, very well, thank you. To forgive is... Uh, is bovine. Is sublime. Ah, we sublime, merci, monsieur. How silly of me. A cow is not sublime. No, I do not think that is it. Pierre, you contradict the customer? Not at all. It does not sound correct. To forgive is sublime. Absurd. Is it not sublime to forgive? Of course, but... Um... I will kill you. Please, please, garçon. Oui? Oui, monsieur? This is outrageous, unbelievable. But of course. And the fly has flown away? What? You're stupid. You have scared away monsieur's fly. I am ashamed, monsieur. Unless he's sunk to the bottom. Allow me. The fly is gone. Of course, the fly is gone because you are too loud. You are a loud, sweaty man, and the fly is gone. Of course, he has flown the coop. It's petite wings, everywhere soup. It's cold. The soup is cold. Cold? Uncle Ab, this is not cold soup. It's shameful. Monsieur, would you agree that the soup should not be cold? Yes. Uh, no, I, I don't want cold soup. Very well. Pierre, what are you waiting for? Rapid man, a fresh bowl of piping hot soup for the gentleman. Right away. Thank you. Wait. Wait. Monsieur, would you like your soup uh, piping hot? Piping? Scalding, fiery, blistering. Well, uh... Maybe uh, lukewarm. Tape it so you don't burn your petit tongue. I don't want to burn my tongue, but I don't want to take a bath in it. As the fly has. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more, monsieur. Your soup will be perfect. Pierre, to sweet. Oui. And Pierre? Oui. Send la mouche. Cher pays de mon enfance, bercé de tendre insouciance. 
Je t'ai gardé dans mon cœur Je t'ai gardé dans mon cœur Hashtag hilarious, LOL, or whatever laughing emoji you prefer. That fly in the soup bit never gets old. But this one wasn't doing the backstroke. Looking to the immediate future, we've got more great one acts coming your way. But keep in mind, CVFT is also planning for the 2021-22 season and beyond. We hope to see you this summer for our outdoor production coming to a band shell near you of selections from Les Miserables in concert. To support that and other future CVFT productions, consider donating at www.cvft.org. Hey, hey, Lenny, what's going on? Not much, Harv. How's it with you? Same old. You got the scores? Yeah, the team sucks. Don't I know it? Yep. You want a lunch? Did you eat yet? No, but I'm, I'm skipping lunch today. What? Are you on a diet or something? Let me buy you a sub. I got something going on. I'll take a rain check. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, who's your nosy friend? Huh? Oh, that's a mine. No kidding. Yeah. What the heck is a mine? Um, like him. You know about mimes, right? Well, I mean, I've seen these guys around. They're like clowns, right? What's he looking for? A handout? That's probably what he depends on. You want I should sock him? No, Harv. Have a little more respect for the straight performer. I find these clown guys annoying. He's not a clown, Harv. He's a mime. Mime has its roots in the Commedia dell'arte, not clowning. Have you ever heard of Marcel Marceau? Famous French mime? Performed completely without words, just by using gestures? Never heard of him. Yeah. He's like the Marlon Brando of mimes. French guy. Born in the 1920s. Len, this mime is really starting to annoy me. He's pushing all of my buttons. Buddy, buddy, you want to find someplace else to stand? You want to get lost? Harp, Harp, he can't leave. I locked him in his box. Oh. Huh? Yeah, he's stuck in there. Okay. I am not following. In his box. His imaginary box. Oh, like a pretend box. What? Can you do it for him? Come on, do it for him. What do you want him to do, Len? You want I should clock him one. See that, Harp? Oh, oh yeah. So he's like pretending to be stuck in a box. Oh no, he's genuinely stuck in a box. I mean, this guy's a professional. And I locked it. I don't see a box. Well, it's in his mind, Harv, and it's in our minds now too, but that doesn't make it any less real, does it? Then you locked it. Yeah, I came along and... And that's all it took. And you got this guy locked in. Yep. Freaky. So he's like double locked now. Hmm? Well... You locked him in earlier, and you just put another lock on there. Yes. Yes, Harv. I suppose he is. Yes, he's double locked in there. So now what? Are you going to mess with him or what? I'm definitely going to test the boundaries of reality and illusion, Harv. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I guess that's what I mean. That all he does, the box thing. I imagine not. Most mimes also do the classic mime walk do it mime let's see the walk mime come on this mime's got an attitude problem lenny come here a second huh 
come over here. What? You're never going to get him to do the walk by making him mad. Harv, mimes aren't stupid. No, no. You've got to use psychology on him. These mimes are a very proud and sensitive lot. Psychology. Yeah. Look, just follow my lead, okay? I'm with you, Lynn. And you see, Harv, that is why he can't do the mime walk. He's just not skilled enough to do the walk inside a small space, inside the box. He needs more room. Makes perfect sense to me. Of course, not skilled enough. Hey, that's pretty messed up. See, this guy's a professional. Even incorporated the box into the whole walk thing. Yeah, a real pro. Hey, Len, is the lock a combination lock or? A key lock. And here's the key for the second lock. Can I see it? Sure. And the other one's in my pocket somewhere. Hey, what the heck did you do that for? I don't know. You ate the key. Yeah. Well, well, Harv. I can't keep this guy in here all day. You need to digest the thing and fish it out of the toilet. But, I mean, can't you cut it off with a lock cutter? Are you kidding me? Where am I going to get a lock cutter of that, that size? I don't even think this lock can be cut. It's huge. I don't know. I wasn't thinking. No, you weren't thinking at all. This is serious. I mean, there's only so much oxygen in there. I'm sorry I ate it, Lenny. Well, you should be. I don't know what came over me. I'm very upset. I wanted in on the game. You wanted, of course you did, Harv. Of course you did. Sorry. Don't worry about it. Don't worry at all. We'll figure it out. I still don't see why we can't just use a big mime lock cutter. Harp. Yes? It's because of what I believe about the lock. It's because of the obstacles in my mind. Uh-huh. I believe this lock, this second lock, to be the most massive, indestructible lock known to man. That's what I believe, Harp. Wow. It's my ideal of lock. Of what is lockness. Lock necessity. Locktitude. I had a few bikes stolen. You've got issues, right? It's perfection, Harv. It's per back shut. So, so because that's what you believe, then that's what it is. Well, I suppose. I mean, the only way it really works is if I share in a common belief with the mine. Exactly. But not me. Well. Well, maybe because I had a different picture of the lock. Maybe. Did you see me put the lock on? Yes. What picture did you get of the lock? Massive lock. You see. Okay, I see what you're saying, but I'm just saying my idea could be different than yours. Hang on there, fella. We'll get you out of there. We're all chained up in a cave, Harv. Just looking at flickering shadows on a wall. Lenny, how do you see the box? The box? Yeah, the box. How do you see it? Harp, this box is made of multi-layered, bulletproof glass, bonded together with titanium steel bolts, hinges, and corner pieces. I see a kind of flimsy cardboard box with a little cutout window. You think I'd lock a cardboard box? I mean... Well... It's bulletproof glass, Harp. Multi-layered, bulletproof glass. I just don't see it. A cardboard box? How ridiculous. He could just gnaw his way out. That's what I see. I mean, for this to work, I believe we must have a shared experience, Harv. And you're mucking it all up. Mucking up the works. Am I right? If there's nobody around to hear a mime scream, does he really make a sound? What? If there's nobody around to hear a mime scream, does he really make a sound? Hmm. Know what I mean? I think I do. Wow, that's a mouthful. I say we set fire to the box. Yeah. Wait, say what? And then leave. And this accomplishes what? 
Um, you know, it's a test. Nobody around to hear a mime scream doesn't make a sound. Right, but we can't be around. We gotta leave. But if we leave, how will we know? Didn't think of that. No, you didn't. I think we should do it. I would be curious to test this theory, but as far as I can determine, it's untestable. Well, the mime will know the result. True that. Also, we'll know pretty quickly if the box burns or not. If it's made of cardboard or glass. Exactly. It seems a little unfair to, you know. I mean, we were starting to bond. Hey, you roll the dice, you take your chances. He's out here pretending to be stuck in a box. You know. I suppose. That's the way the ball bounces. Okay, light it up. Okay, not too much. If it's cardboard, it shouldn't need much help. Kitchen matches, nice. You wanna do the honors, Lenny? No, no, please. You're doing an amazing job, Harv. Very impressive. Wow, cardboard. You were right. Look at it burn. Should we go? We have to, we can't stay here. But I wish I was a fly on the wall so I could hear if he screams or not. If you were a fly on the wall, then you'd be here and the experiment would be pointless. Oh, right. I'll take you up on that sub now. Sure thing, Lenny. I'm a little full myself all of a sudden, but I'll buy you one. Passing that key is not going to be easy. I'm not looking forward to it. But we'll figure something out. Thanks, Len. Seems to me we just need to find someone with a different idea of what is the essence of key. Right. He's a cake. What is key? Are you guys finished? Yes. Yes, we are. Everything was wonderful. I know. I love this place. It's just a little hole in the wall, but the food is fantastic. <laughs> work hard and your hard work will work for you. Okay. <laughs> the person you just had dinner with will kill you tonight. What? What the hell? What does it say? The person you just had dinner with will kill you tonight. Does not. Read it. Oh, I don't believe this. What kind of fortune cookie? The person you just had dinner with will kill you tonight. Your lotto numbers are 8, 12, 32, 36, 42, and 7. Is this some kind of joke? Did you do this? No, no, I've never seen this cookie before in my life. Are you going to kill me tonight? I wasn't planning to. Well, that's a relief. But I guess I have to. What? The cookies never lie, Barry. What are you talking about? <laughs> I've never known one of these cookies to be false. If the cookie says it, I'm going to do it. Really? You're going to kill me tonight? Apparently. I wonder how I'll do it. Stephanie, this isn't funny. Oh, hey, you can learn Chinese too. Guo is the Chinese word for kingdom. <laughs> Give me that. Excuse me. Yes? I want to complain about this fortune cookie I got. Look what it says. The person you just had dinner with will kill you tonight. Whoa. Bummer. I just had a lovely dinner and I get hit with that. Do you think that's an appropriate saying for a fortune cookie? Well, it's not the happiest one I've seen. Uh, yeah. 
not even grammatically correct. It should be the person with whom you just had dinner with will kill you tonight. It shouldn't be any of those things. It shouldn't say anything like that. Do you want two more cookies? I can bring you another two. Well, yes, damn it. Sheesh. I'm sorry it had to end this way. Oh, you're hilarious. Here you go. Do you mind? Sorry, I'm kind of curious. Today is a lucky day for those who are cheerful and optimistic. Okay. Your life is over. Oh, come on. Read it. Wow. That is the strangest thing I've ever seen. Did uh, she put you up to this? Don't blame me. It's the cookie. The cookie knows. The cookies don't know a goddamn thing. I want two more cookies. I'm getting kind of full, actually. Two more cookies. So I kill you in the restaurant. I wonder how I do it. But it didn't say. Perhaps the next cookie will provide further detail. <gasps> Maybe the Kung Pao was poisoned. But you added two. Or so you think. Yeah. Open it. I can't stand the suspense. Ah, for the love of, your life is over. You have executive ability and will go far in business. Okay, now what the hell? Don't look at me. You're telling me you don't know anything about this. No, we sit up all night baking the cookies by hand and typing up the little slips of paper. You have no idea how hard it is to get them in a printer. Well then, where do you get these things? We don't know, some company. Same place where we get the sweet and sour sauce and everything else. Hey, I thought you guys made that in the kitchen. Oh, um, oops. D forget that, just, I just want the cookies. You know, bring me the box. Bring me the whole damn box. Now, honey, I am sure there's a reasonable explanation. Besides that you're actually going to kill me? Well, that would be one explanation. So, um, why would I want to kill you? I don't know. You wouldn't. Would you? Would I? Here, knock yourself out. Well... This is uh, probably how I died from a, a massive paper cut, trying to get this thing open. Would it be too much to ask for a scissors or something to open this with? Oh, for Pete's sake. She is so not getting a tip. Honey, it is not her fault that I'm going to murder you. Stop saying that. It isn't funny. I'm getting creeped out here. I think it's hysterical. Those little cookies got y'all jumpy. <laughs> I'm not jumpy. I'm just pissed off. Bea, anything else? won't make it out of this restaurant alive. There is no escape. Only death awaits you. You have minutes to live. <laughs> Here it comes. Your charm and affability are noticed by your friends. Okay, that's just freaky. What did you do? Honey? 
Put the knife down. Oh God, why am I going to kill you? You messing around on me? No, no, swear to God, no. Did you and this waitress concoct this little scheme? What? No, I, I'm not in cahoots with this waitress. What is it then? Are you keeping money from me? What? <sighs> nothing, nothing. There is no reason why you would kill me. You have no secrets from me? None. Absolutely none? Absolutely none. Uh, well. Aha. Uh -huh. it, it's a little thing. A stupid thing. What? Tell me. The, uh, the bakery dome that your sister Anna sent us, the one that I said broke during shipping, it didn't. I broke it. Accidentally. And I was going to tell you. What? It, it's not that I didn't like it. It just, it slipped. And I, it felt bad. That's it? The bakery don't. That's it. It's my only secret. Yeah, feels good to get that off my chest before I died. I wouldn't kill you over that. You wouldn't? You thought I would kill you over that? Well, not until the cookie. To hell with the cookie. Let's just pay our check and get out of here. Well, what about the cookie knows all? Honey, it's just a cookie. And guess what? The lottery numbers won't win either. Well, I'll promise you one thing. We're never coming back to this restaurant. Hey, wait a minute. We didn't have the pork and Peking sauce or the broccoli beef. Ah, and where's the Kung Pao? Well, it's not our check. Oh man, I'm sorry. I must have. Ah! Ah! Which your check with another table? Here's yours. Do you need anything wrapped up? Thank you for joining us for Chaska Valley Family Theater's Virtual One Act Festival. We hope you enjoyed the performances and that your laugh muscles got in a good workout. Our talented cast and crew members had a lot of fun putting this together for you. Remember, it's through the generosity of audience members like you that we're able to continue bringing theater to the community. Please visit us at www.cvft. Dot org to learn more about Chaska Valley Family Theater, how to get involved, and to donate. Thank you again, and we hope to see you soon. <laughs>